42 years ago, man went where he'd never gone before. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Today on OTR, remember Brant Myers? Myers about the long, tough guy in the San Jose lineup. Suspended by the NHL for life for drugs and alcohol? Three years ago, he quit. That's one small step for man. Today, he's still clean and sober and talking. One giant leap for mankind. Last year, the NFL admitted concussions are a problem. That's one small step for man. Today, 75 players sue for damages for their damaged brains. One giant leap for mankind. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg. Brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends. See you tonight. First flame fight of the season. It is George LaRock knocking down Brent Myers of the Flames. And Myers gets up and again he's knocked down. He took on one of the toughest guys in the National Hockey League. LaRock getting the better of that one. That fight with George LaRock was the end of Brant Myers' NHL career. Remember the name Brant Myers? Maybe you don't. Don't worry, because he didn't always remember his own name either. Sometimes because of drug and alcohol, other times because of concussions. Is that true? Is that a fair way to describe it? Yeah, I would think so. Um, I know that now, especially once I retired and I got out of the game, um, you know, the memories is not like it used to be. You, you've come out and, and you, you've spoken about it um, very poignantly, and you've now dedicated your life to helping others. So, so let's get... A look, a snapshot at the National Hockey League the way you see it. You played for seven teams in the NHL. I think you played for 17 teams overall, mm -hmm. so you know. Does there need to be a culture change in hockey? Well, I, I would think that there definitely needs to be some attention paid. The best way I can explain it is that I, out of those seven NHL teams that I played on, there wasn't one guy that was in uh, recovery that was uh, going through the same thing that I was going through, so it was tough. So you were suspended five times. The final time was for good, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. did you feel, at least at that point, a little bit abandoned by the NHL? Well, they, they told me after my fourth suspension that they were pretty much done, that they, uh, they did what they could, and, and, and I understood that. Um, and then I'll, it, it got dark for about a year and a half, and then uh, uh, they called me and said that we're going we're gonna to pay so for it. So they came so. back to you, and they said, you know, we want you to, to go into the program. They paid for the plane flights. They paid for yeah. the program, right? Yeah, they paid for six months of treatment, and then when uh, when I got out, they also paid for me to go back to school. Yeah. So that that from your standpoint is real positive. Oh, it was unbelievable. It saved my life. Yeah, for sure. There have been reports of some players over the years having quote unquote injuries, being out for an eight week period of time. I is it fair, and without you know talking about names at all, that some of those players are actually going to rehab as opposed to being out with injuries? Well, I think that's why I have a union to protect the players from that kind of media uh, coverage. So um, I'm really not too sure about it. Well, that kind of means that you are too. <laughs> but but I, I'm not asking you yeah. to. But, but I mean, yeah. part of the problem, right, is that if no one acknowledges there's a problem, then the problem gets magnified, right? True. Yeah, I, I swept it under the rug for about eight years and uh, it definitely got a lot worse, yeah. So l let's talk about, uh, first of all, you have a certificate now from Mount Royal, is it? In, in substance abuse? Yeah, in Calgary. Counseling, yeah. right. Yeah. And that allows you to counsel others. Yeah, well, I think that it, ultimately what I wanted to do is enhance my chances of uh, maybe uh, offering my services to the uh, union. And what you and I are talking, okay, you mentioned the union. You went to them, right, a year ago and said, hey, I'm here to help. And what did they say? I met with uh, Don Fear about a month and a half after he got inducted, and uh, we had a good meeting. Um, but I, I think at that time that he wanted to wait a little bit longer. Okay, and he waited a little bit longer, and a year later you met with him again. And what was the impetus, do you think, for his change, and what was his change? Well, I haven't met with him yet on the second time, but uh, I think after uh, what happened to Derek Bugard and Bob Probert in last year, I think it's time. Right, and, and have you been contacted by them? Uh, you know what? I've been keeping my foot on the gas, uh, right. being proactive with it. So. What can we learn from Derek Bugard, and what can we learn from Bob Probert? Because there's people who are associated with hockey that will say, Brent, these were troubled individuals. Hockey didn't make them drink. Hockey didn't turn them to drugs. What can we learn from them? Well, I think that at the end of the day, we have to understand that we're human beings and that, um, you know, if you give any 18, 19, 20-year-old the opportunity that we have and the financial success that they have, uh, sometimes it's hard to keep it under wraps. Do you think that people around the game, such as coaches and general managers, do you think it's that they don't want to know what's going on because if they know, then somehow you have a responsibility? Uh, no, I think maybe that's changed a little bit as well. I think that they uh, truly care about the players today, for sure. And what does that mean when you say they care about the players? 
Well, I, you know, from my end, they, they were willing to do whatever it took to get me straight and narrow. Um, I had to take the responsibility on myself, though, and, and it took me a long time to admit that. When did you have your first drink? Oh, geez, I was probably about, I think, 10. 10 yeah. years old, you yeah. had your first drink. Yeah. And, and, and what age did you think to yourself, I got a problem? Well, I got suspended from the Western Hockey League when I was 17 and I, for a week. And then um, they let me come back to the team. And then uh, in Philly, uh, Bobby Clark told me if I didn't get sober, uh, they were going to release me. And they did at the end of the year. You know, one of the things, you played a position which we are now learning is very difficult to play emotionally and mentally and psychologically. Uh, you were a tough guy in the National Hockey League and you had to fight. We saw your career ended because of a punch from George Laroque. Do you think that position carries extra pressure and that's why we have seen some guys who play that position turn to drugs and alcohol for help? Well, I think that if you asked anybody, uh, you know, the, the same question as far as scoring off with a real tough guy in front of 20,000 fans uh, in two or three days knowing that you had to do it, um, to self-medicate was something that was pretty normal. Are you so, going to win the day? Pardon me? Are you going to win the day? Yeah, I'm winning it so far. What does sure. that mean? Well, for me, every, uh, every day that I don't drink or, or take a drug is a, is a win for sure. And you went into the program, right? Like AA is a part of your life? Yeah, I attend meetings for sure. It helps me out a lot. Right. Yeah. An important message for people who think they can do it alone. Maybe mm -hmm. they can, but better chance uh, with some help. Yeah. Well, I tried to do it alone for uh, 10 years and it didn't work my way. So. Right. But you know what? You are a huge success and now you're making a huge difference. And let's go over there and chat with some guys who I, I think could use some changing around. <laughs> okay, thanks. Up next, our panel, including Darren Langdon. He and Brant Myers have met at least one time before. Myers looks pretty smart so far in this thing. And later, it's our best of the web. Stay tuned. Because it's gonna blow in a good way. Off the Records Up Front is brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Yeah, they got the gloves dropped right away. Ooh, Myers left-handed, huh? You don't see that often against Langdon. Myers looks pretty smart so far in this thing. Yeah, with Langdon landing one. Here we go. Start about now, the second half's going to begin. Myers changes hands. The fans get into it now. Brent Myers and Darren Langdon, that was their second fight. Uh, they sit on the set together now. When was the last time you guys saw each other? Uh, back in, I think, 98. Was, was, <laughs> like, have you seen each other since you fought? No, I haven't seen them or talked uh, to them. That's wild. Good to see you. We've already met you. Darren Langdon, pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, nice to be here. I met you first time, St. John's. You got a, you got a place out there, right? No, I actually live in Deer Lake, which is like six hours from St. John's. So you had to correct me right off the top of the show. He knows more about his life than me. Pleasure to see you, man. No, nice to be here. Great to welcome this guy back to the show, Jamie McLennan, good friend of mine. Two good friends are sitting here because across from you is Steve Lutze. Good to see you as well, Steve. Good. You watched that fight? I did. You know the worst thing you can hear a referee say to, to you when you're on the ice? Let him go. <laughs> oh, that's the worst thing you can say to you. <laughs> Let uh, him go. So let's take hockey at its word that NHL players are different and they don't do steroids but if we are really looking at what NHL players do do can you say that the National Hockey League has a problem with alcohol define problem first without define problem uh, every day that 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 the you know, culture of playing in the NHL um, may lead players to having a problem with alcohol because absolutely. it's so accepted a and expected. Absolutely, you got to remember I was co coached by the great Derek Sanderson Jr. and he warned us all the, the trials and tribulations that were going to happen along the way. I would say that the culture itself breeds the fact that you're going to drink. I mean, sometimes you go for lunch and have five or six beers. Your wife said, "What did you have for lunch?" And, well, you had a sandwich and five six beers. That's not normal. No. Uh, you know, I kind of agree with in some ways, but when I uh, started in 94, 95, going out to lunch, like I said, about 10, 10 guys go out to lunch. When I ended off uh, five years ago, I couldn't, you know, two or three guys went out to lunch, a couple of beers went home because everybody was thinking about getting in shape more, people are stronger. And you can't be drinking all night and being in shape. Well, the game's changed nowadays. Yeah, you exactly. have to. Yeah. You have to be in great shape. But uh, I've been known to have a pop or two, and people who follow my Twitter account will, will uh, see the account. But uh, you know, bottom line is, is you have to be able to draw the line. And and if to me a problem is is if you can't stop. But I have no issue with alcohol in the National Hockey League. To I don't have an issue. I'm just saying that I think hockey players, and I think we're, we're blind if we don't say that we all, most of us drink. We also have a couple. Of, 
you know. Tom Lysiak played the best when he walked in the dressing room and he had a little bit of a hangover from the night before. Yeah. <laughs> you knew he was going to play great. Yeah, well, there's, a, there's a difference between, um, you know, having a few pops and having an issue with it, right? Yeah. And, and that, we've seen that in the last couple of years with two guys that ended up losing their lives because Absolutely. there needs to be more attention. If you're blind that. drunk, like you drink yourself blind drunk every night. But that's the obvious drunk, though. But, you know, like if, if you... There's a lot of closet go, ones. Yeah. Well, right. And, or, and, or, the, or the four beers and you get a DUI on the way home. Yeah. But, you know, if, if, if you're drinking four beers three or four times a week, you're an alcoholic. Yeah, you know, that's, that's not definition. me determining that. Well, I'm that's... not even quite sure that's, that's right either. And then the two guys that passed away, I think there was other, other things in their system, was right. it not? Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. Oxycodone and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. which is, a, I mean, that's a dangerous mix. Let's yeah. face it. Different altogether. Yeah. I think yeah. alcohol is, is a stepping stone to other things sometimes if you can't control it. And, and uh, you know, if you're out for a good time, but there are def different definitions of alcoholism uh, anyway. So you can be a weekend warrior and still be an alcoholic if you have to drink 50 yeah. drinks. But when you start out, if you're a young player and you, and you join a team, is is it difficult to say, you know, uh, I'm not going for beers uh, and that I don't drink? Is that, Absolutely. Is, is that a tough thing to say? Uh, it's very tough for a young guy, 19, 20 years Bloods old. Bloods in your in. day, I'm guaranteed, like for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, like, you know, we're, we're older. And, and I've always been, uh, listen, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I lost my dad to alcoholism at 50 years of age. So I kept a beady eye on it. Great guy, but liked to drink. And I never thought, you know, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. It catches up to everybody every along the way. Yeah. My story, I got called up to Montreal from uh, Rangers, I was in Bimington. Got called up, Mess comes up to me, Darren, team meeting at uh, yeah. Shea Prix. <laughs> I said, Mess, I gotta try to play, I gotta play. I don't care, you gotta show up, you could have a Coke, That's one right. beer, and go yeah. on. But it was a team bonding thing, and you most, pe most people showed up. In today's you want to game talk game about Shea Prix? There's guys that will accept, there's a lot of, uh, fitness nuts there's a lot of guys who are very focused on their body they will show up though to be a good teammate yeah you show up you drink water gotta go to break Brent um, tell us about your website and, and, and uh, what you're trying to do well it's uh, greaterstrides.ca and it's uh, with the help of Treaty 7 Management Corp we're uh, building the first Aboriginal hockey community so you, your commitment is or not, academy sorry right your commitment is not just to to helping players with drugs and alcohol but specifically in the Aboriginal community yeah I have a uh, background on that and uh, you know as a, if I can lend a hand to any of the kids that you have very sure. impressive it's amazing how the worst thing in your life can turn into the biggest lesson in your life more OTR in a moment Rolls is dazed and down what collision with the two -pick. needed help just to stand up oh, that was ugly a crunching hit put on by Sheldon Brown and Bush uh, takes a while to get up oh big hit to Sean Jackson. He is woozy and headed off the field. For years, those hits and similar hits in the NHL have been shown in highlight reels over and over. People go, ooh, and ah, and they're laughing, they're entertained. Can you really still react that way, knowing that each one of those hits could have added to a player's long-term misery? 75 former NFL players have filed a lawsuit against the National Football League, essentially saying, you knew stuff about concussions that you didn't reveal to us. Bottom line, is a league responsible for protecting players from themselves? I think, guys, absolutely. The, we're talking about the National Hockey League. We're talking right here. Uh, the game has changed so much. I, I'm not a hockey aficionado. I watch the old films. They did not hit the way they hit today. They hit now to separate you from your senses, not the puck. So I think the NHL has to take some responsibility, and the players. Yeah, the National Fo Football League should get behind it. But the problem is, is the players, they rely on those paychecks. So a lot of, a lot of times, guys will fight through it because you get... You get concussed. You don't want somebody to take it, your job. And it had it, it was a lot similar to me when I when I had my alcohol problem. I mean, the last guy that I was going to go to and talk to were the doctors or, or, or some of the management. You know, and if I wanted. So to you, you try to keep it quiet and like, like all until it's question. too late. Until like it's we were too late. just talking, like how many how many of us had diagnosed with concussions when we played? We didn't think anything about it. It was like I got a bit of a headache. Don't worry about it. what's the score. Two one. You're right. You're getting right. there. You're okay. Yeah. But now everybody knows the, the, the effects. And, and that's it, good, though. That's good, Michael. It's good, of course. But now there's a huge amount of pressure on the NHL, on the National Football League, on the UFC, on boxing in general to say, OK, we know what these hits do. What do we do about them? Well, the coaches are telling, like, for me personally, if, if I went out, seen a guy with his head down with the puck and I didn't hit him, what am I going to do? Yeah. Sit on yeah. the bench. These football players, 
same thing. Coach saying he's going to. So crop. what do you do about it? Or is it is well, it just hard. the I nature mean, of this? It's got to be the coaches, the players, and like, owners. I don't think you do that. The job though, really. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you you are signing up. You know what you're getting a Physical into. sport, and you. You're, there chances are you are going to get hurt. I mean, when you play, there there are injuries but, that come with the game. Yeah. And in today's game, there are hand hunters in the National Hockey League and the National Football League. We saw Harrison. He, you know, you know, he he's a guy who admittedly goes after and tries to injure other players, and you know, and that's unfortunate. And unfortunately, we're playing a sport, or we did play a sport. It's like a bumper car ride. You don't have to get a shot to the head to get knocked out unconscious. It's bumper car ride for 24, 25 yeah. hours. You know what I'm saying? Like he's bang, mm -hmm. bang, bang. bang 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 it essentially wears you down well, I think that I, I think the, re the real question is what do you do if you want the sport to be played a certain way and, and let's talk specifically about the NHL the NHL says we like the hitting we like the fast pace we like to some extent the danger in the game what do you do if that's what you want the game to be yet you find out that that is having devastating effects on players there's not much they could do obviously you go back Put to the, the hooking, instigator clutch and back, grab yeah. a little bit like that <laughs> yeah the instigator <laughs> up a little bit yeah. I mean, when you uh, got like guys size of Brett out there, uh, the players that are playing right Matt now, Cook is not, not going to take a run. They don't realize no. the damage. That, 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 what you see now, you will feel ten years from now. I know per, firsthand. I've got some severe neurological damage that I've not come forth with. And when I feel like it's time to come forth, I will do that. But uh, I've got some damage neurologically, and it's it's from getting banged and you banged know what? and banged. I I brought that up too to a good buddy of mine, Jimmy Thompson, talking yeah. about how um, how, how my memory since I got out of the game yeah. is definitely not what it used to be. And after you know two three yeah. hundred fights playing hockey, there has to be some type of uh, repercussion because uh, of that. You know it's, what? It's devastating. It Somebody's going to go ten toes up, and, and then they're going to be in trouble. That is that's unfortunately what we the group signed up for. We saw, yeah, I signed up for. You know, yeah. you guys were enforcers. Mm -hmm. and, you know, Steve, you're a, a tough guy that played, and I was a goalie. I get hit in the head for. <laughs> A living even <laughs> sitting on the bench yeah. I mean it was awful but yeah. unfortunately the the team washes their hands with but maybe you got to cut you off done. sorry one of the most revealing shows that, that we've done really appreciate all of your candor uh, come back again soon you too and and you will talk later on I'm sorry about your your issues